Good afternoon, good people, and welcome to another community race in the Final Fantasy Randomizer Weekend at Xeno's Secret Mystery Weekend. I am Saracen. I am joined in the booth by Solario Rex. How are you doing today, Solario? Hey, Saracen. I am ready and waiting for this thing to kick off. I am so excited. I saw a few of our matches that we had yesterday. I saw the buck wild seeds that got churned out, and I cannot wait to see what happens today. Absolutely. I'm excited here for our, our journey, the science as we go through this seed, because not even the commentary booth here knows what's going on with these seeds. This is a complete mystery. These are artisanal curated ROMs by select members of the community sent to these racers that have uh, complete mystery flags. We don't know what's going on until we get in here. So far, the only thing that we know right now is that the party was uh, was possible to change. You, you could change it around. It was not forced. And we have two blessings per class with no malices. Yeah, we uh, came in, we saw those fighters. The fighters came in with some pretty dope bonuses on them. Uh, I believe, what was that, Black Belt Vitality and plus 20% hit or something along those lines? I think it was 15%. Okay, so we, can, we already know right out of the gate that those fighters are going to be tanky and they're going to slap you and they're going to hit. Um, so we can get really excited about that, I suppose. Yep, yeah, and our... Uh... Ooh, away we go. Oh. So we were chatting about this, Saracen, a little bit right before the seed started. Um, do you want to dive into this a little bit more? Uh, a note for all those watching us, we are on version 4.2.0. Um, so, you know, get excited for uh, version 420 of the Final Fantasy Randomizer. Uh, let's talk about what's going on here. Uh, well, so we have a deep dungeon seed, and right off the bat, we are seeing Devious RNG completely reform his party, because that was a white mage locked fade in the level one magics. Uh, so with deep dungeon, uh, there are 40-ish floors, I believe, something along those lines, and you just keep searching for stairs. Every floor is procedurally generated. Uh, the treasure is random, sort of within a band. Um, and the monster similarly uh, random-ish within a band. But it is still get down to the bottom, kill chaos. There is the opportunity to, um, to promote. You can find the tail, you can find Bahamut. They are randomly placed within the deep dungeon. And there are other towns. You have to find the stairs for them as you keep going. So this uh, introductory uh, <laughs> seeing Corneria, Corneria and Corneria Castle there, that's about as much of the overworld as that as we're going to see today, right? They're, we're not going to pop out anywhere else. This is just deep dungeon, dungeon seed. Yep, and so there's a couple of things with deep dungeon that are really interesting when you're trying to figure out the layouts. So there's a lot of running from encounters early on because... Um, you're just not going to get very much experience. And the progressive experience basically doesn't exist in this mode. Um, there are a couple of warp stairways as you get further in. I believe that those are linked to towns. Uh, those stairways are at that little cross area where you saw sages blocking the way. And so as we get further in, we will uh, have the opportunity to you know, save our progress, so to speak. Because if you reset in Deep Dungeon, you go all the way back to the overworld. So uh, wiping or resetting, you know, either way, you're going to come right back to Canaria Town, and it's going to be a real uh, interesting time, we'll say. Well, all right, looks like we've got Devious uh, resetting his party one more time. I'm not sure if this is intentional or what, what exactly we're looking at here. It is absolutely intentional. So one of the thing that, that's really problematic in Deep Dungeon is there are no spike tiles. So you don't have the opportunity to grind that black belt up. And because there's no progressive experience, you can't really rely on the black belt to get that punching power you need to complete. So I mean, we're really going to lean into that fighter here. And we see uh, both of them now as a fighter rainbow. Yeah, looks like so... We've got each of our runners here. Looks like they take a step into Conaria Castle. 
they've kind of got this introductory room. Um, and in this room, there are a bunch of uh, kind of little little rooms that uh, do not have kind of anything in here. Uh, we have our four-way, and then here we go. This is our introductory room. It appears as though there's only one staircase out of this room, and it leads to this uh, earth cavern patterned room. Um, and that's about as much progress as we've made so far. How thrown off do you think our runners are by this? Do you think either one of them was expecting to see this today? So let me tell you, I did comms with Devious yesterday afternoon, and we talked about what he was concerned about seeing in this mystery weekend. Deep Dungeon was in that list. And it's because it's a fundamentally different way to play the game. Uh, you know, you're not thinking about how do I progress the overworld? What are my options in mobility? That sort of thing. You need to figure out what are my options just to move forward? How far can I push? Uh, and how do I appropriately explore these floors? Yeah, I mean, this is... <laughs> I mean, this almost isn't Final Fantasy anymore, is it? I mean, it's a completely different way to kind of conceptualize, think about, kind of race this game. Um, but it's it's almost its own game mode, which is which is wonderfully cruel in our, you know, weekend at Zeno's. So the thing that I think is really interesting with this is uh, a very common flag, but let's, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if it's on here. But a very common flag in this uh, setting is to have save on game over. And the reason for that is it can be very hard to get to a point where you can save. Like, you know, getting to uh, Provoca is a journey. It's about... I think six or seven floors down typically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, seeing if we save that experience. And then the other real challenge here is remembering where the staircases are on each floor. Um, you have to check each room generally anyway. And, you know, you can really easily lose track of where those stairs are to move on to the next area. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, oh, we've got Devious. Devious finds Provoca. Um, looks like it is personless, which is kind yep. of fun. You know, you don't have to worry about Mr. Mohawk getting in your way. Yeah, that is, uh, that and the bridge guy. The bridge guy who always likes, to, he's, he's like a football lineman. He just dives into your way. Uh, you see the little teleporter there on the floor on Pickles and Beer side. That is a staircase as well. Uh, they randomize what, um, what your stairs are. You could have ladders, you could have the holes like you see in marsh caves sometimes, you know, or, or an ice cave. So you're looking for those, and the only way that you really know that you found a floor with a town is either you've gone into the staircase or you've uh, found two. So, so there's uh, a lot of... See... I'm sorry for interrupting. We do see level two white magic. We do see exit. Is that going to be valuable to our players here? Will that take them all the way back to Canaria? All the way back to Floor Zero? It absolutely will. And so that has uh, limited utility. Oh, we see that the shops have legendary items in them, and they roll high. Uh, we saw some opals with plus five uh, opal armor. So that fighter could very well be loaded for bear in the not-too-distant future. We'll have to see about our, our gold. We have not found very many chests yet, um, which I feel like could be frustrating. I think that finding a decent amount of chests in the early game is often important to our success, not just in this mode, but in, you know, Final Fantasy Randomizer in general. You know, open the chest, get the stuff, find the stuff that you need to kill everything, and you win. Um, but finding very little in the beginning here might uh, additionally be frustrating on top of this uh, kind of new game mode. Yeah, and, you know, to go along with that, my last experience with Deep Dungeon was on the prior patch, and so it uh, may not be representative anymore, but the treasure kind of happens in bands in the version that I'm familiar with. And so when you find a chest, it's going to be sort of, sort of appropriate-ish to the floor that you're on within a certain range. What that also means, though, is that when you get towards the end of the dungeon, you know, you can have multiple chests with legendary pieces in there that are normally just one per. So you could find six or seven chests with mosses in them. Uh, and, and yeah, so the, the deeper you go, the better the gear gets. Oh, look at this floor that Pickles is on, where the 
the next set of stairs, literally right where you start in. <laughs> Interesting. We do have uh, our good friend Ale Markin, classic gamer. A few uh, well-known folks in the chat here. Uh, Ale pointing out the deeper you go, the better the gear is that you'll find. Um, so thanks for that. And, uh, you know, we are we are looking forward to seeing how great the gear get as we continue to deep dive. Chat. Um, I want you to know you're looking cute today. I brushed my teeth for you, so uh, let's 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 keep it classy. You shave too? Get rid of that five o'clock shadow. Oh, you best believe. <laughs> I I did, I'm nice lazy. I mean, chat chat came in looking nice. I I needed to look nice today too. I barely warmed up my announcer voice. I am such a slacker <laughs> compared to you, Solario. Oh man, the nice putting is a... pressure on. That is a right. plus Looks six like getting, on the armor. Yeah, we're getting some, uh, ooh, a wall plus five. So we do have, uh, it looks like randomized item magic is turned on here. Uh, wall, not a terrible spell, not necessarily what you want to see, but, uh, yeah. Oh, we've got, uh, B Little in the chat. What's the goal here? I'm new. Well, you have walked into an interesting scenario, my friend. So, uh, what our runners are doing here is they're playing the, this is the original Final Fantasy. Uh, it has been run through a randomizer, and basically, uh, specialized game mode has kind of been turned on here. Um, it's called the Deep Dungeon flag set, um, and so basically there is no overworld. It's just room after room connected by teleporters, connected by stairs, connected by everything. And the, the end goal of the game is generally the same. So the end goal here is going to be to light all four of our orbs. You can see them located in our tracker space below each runner. Uh, the little gray orbs for earth, fire, wind, or water, and air, excuse me. And after lighting the four orbs, they will be able to fight the final fiend, Chaos. Um, so you have to defeat Chaos and save the world. No, actually, that's that's a question that I have because again, I'm a little out of date on my deep dungeon. Did the fiends get added in? Because when I last played, the uh, the fiends weren't there. Um, while we're while we're ruminating on this, DVS has found Elfland. That is a huge, huge find in deep dungeon. Um, you kind of. You know, Melmond is sort of a nothing burger because there's no item shop there. You get magic, and, you know, hopefully you can use that magic. Uh, uh, that is a Fire 2 Sword plus 6. Ooh, that fighter suddenly looking real nice. Um, oh, so that wall plus 5 is a weapon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, so I guess we may not see orbs or fiends here, um, as Classic Gamer points out in chat. Um, so, you know, what do I know? We're trying to kill chaos, I think, is, is a good way to summarize it, though, be little. Um, there's a final fiend, and uh, we're going to take him down. So, uh, oh, we found Maybe. the TNT on Pickles and Beer's side. So that's going to open up one of those staircases on the main level. Okay, so that was going to be my next question. On our, on our very first level, there's kind of a, a cross that we had. There was uh, four staircases, three of them blocked. They are blocked by individuals that are awaiting key items. Is that is that how this works out? It, you know, I honestly haven't run it recently enough to know because they didn't exist when I was there. <laughs> my last run was, was a few months back, so I haven't seen it lately. Ooh, we see awesome. a Bane Sword plus four. Four. That's that's a nice pickup. You know, one of the things with uh, with Deep Dungeon is it's really common to have these item magic flags on, and the reason is that it's very hard to um, to find ins <laughs> to get your spell slots back, and you know as much as you know both of these runners put that priority on having a rainbow party, having all of the magic available to them. It's hard to justify using it a lot of the time. So that's um, finding these these magic uh, casting items is a big deal. Oh, there was a cake sword there. New oh, 
That was that was that's a nuke axe. We found a nuke axe, everyone. We're in the money. We are in the money. That is a huge find for DVS. So it looks like we may have all of our items casting magic. Um, is that uh, Saracen? Do you know is that a is that a flag that can be turned off and on? Having all. Um, items cast magic? I believe that is a, uh, a flag that's available in the randomizer generally. Wunderbar. Oh, we've got a nice little staircase there inside one of the rooms that DV has found. All weapons cast magic. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Aylmarkin. Always coming in with that hot, hot knowledge. Oh, no one passes him. There we go. We've got Narek blocking a staircase. So Pickles and Beer first to turn in that TNT. Um, he did, I, I don't know if he exited. Uh, I think he may have cast exit to get out. And so he's taking our our southerly path here in our blocked staircases to see see where he heads. So I think this has to I, be incredibly confusing, keeping track of all of these staircases. It's no, it absolutely is. There is a strong desire when you're playing this flag set to uh, to just go, go, go. You know, if if you stop to uh, to go back, you can very easily lose track of where you were, what progress is, where your stairs to the next floor are. So uh, that's a challenge that our runners have to overcome, right? Yeah, so it looks like Pickles and Beer has taken the strategy of kind of ducking out of the seat, ducking out when he finds that key item that will unlock the next branch for him. Whereas it looks like Devious may be taking the one branch that he had, they both had open to them all the way to the bottom. Yeah, or at least and as far as he can make it. So uh, there, there's a couple of pieces of strategy that I had picked up back in the day. And one of them was... Generally, you like to, to search north on each floor as you go, because doors always are on the, the south end of the rooms. So when you're walking down like this, you end up walking into more dead ends more frequently. Uh, the other thing is because the loot gets progressively better as you move on, there's a strong incentive to push as far as you can and uh, you know know where your towns are, where you can raise people. So, like I mentioned before, Melmond, kind of a nothing burger. Well, it doesn't have the ability to raise dead either. You've just got an inn and some shops. Uh, whereas when you find Onrak, you're a little bit happier. Like, you, sure, you don't have weapons or armor shops, but you can raise people, you can buy items, you can restock. And, um, and, and similarly, when you get to Lafane, uh, Lafaneage Hospitality is a very common flag. It does work with this. Um, hopefully we'll see that on so that there's an inn and uh, a temple there so we can raise people. Yeah. Pickles and Beer picking up that nuke axe that we saw earlier. Um, so awesome for him. Um, it looks like Devious is maybe taking some notes. Um, and away he goes again. I think both of our runners, it looks like both of our runners are now on the same track. Um, or I'm just, you know, royally confused. So, you know, one Don't or the worry. other. Royally Confused is the name of the game in Deep Dungeon. Uh, you just keep looking for the stairs that go up, which is kind of funny. We call it Deep Dungeon, but all the stairs go up. You're really climbing a tower here. Uh, but, you know, you're just looking for the next set of stairs. It's at a all deep turns. tower. That's, right. That's where we're at, I suppose. <laughs> Chadbert, I feel for you. Uh, I've as, as your commentary from that seed, I understand. So, looks like uh, Pickles and Beer taking a few, uh, or taking an encounter here. Um, having that nuke axe now makes uh, gaining a few levels, taking a few fights seem much more feasible. Um, I think, you know, maybe both of our runners might be looking for a level or two here. We haven't really gained a ton at this point yet, and we are going to have to kill something at some point. Um, but both of our runners are relatively, you know, small when it comes to a level count. Yeah, and, you know, we're... 
it, it's really hard to decide sometimes when you start engaging in the encounters. Uh, Pickles and beer. You know, I hope he had a pure. I didn't. I didn't see if there was a menuing there because I looked over at Devious' screen while I was talking. But uh, you know, when you see poison hit, if you haven't gone shopping, that can be a really big deal. Uh, so. Yeah, you could be walking quite a ways before you find anything to help out your light warrior there. Right. And the other thing is finding encounters that are worth your time. Like that nuke axe opens up a lot of options, right? There's our Bahamut. Now, here's the question is, where's the tail? It, it could be a free tail. I didn't see it yet. But now we know where Bahamut is in case we want to promote. This is true. And I mean... It sounds like we could just find the tail here on this floor if we were, you know, spectacularly lucky. It is possible. I mean, there are quite a few chests on this floor. Ooh, we found a ribbon plus three. That is an excellent pickup. Mm-hmm. Even that buckler plus four is good. Ooh. Uh, Classic Gamer bringing up a great point in chat. Is the Fight Bahamut um, flag on? So, a little bit of uh, background. Um, there could be just about any one of our fl many flags on in this set. So, there are quite a few that we really haven't seen, don't know. Um, I think it would be interesting. Where does a Forced Warmack show up if that, see if that flag is on? Um, where does, you know, a few of these other flags may become inconsequential because of, you know, this deep dungeon flag set. So there are a few flags that are incompatible with deep dungeon, and I don't know if Forced Warmack is compatible. Divi is finding a second nuke axe. You have to be excited about that. That's just a good time. A lot of crazy uh, combinations of walls and, uh, you know, formations here. I love the randomization of these formations and things. It really brings a new flavor to the game. I, I cannot stress enough how enjoyable I find that. You know, we see the same rooms, we see the same doors, we see the same staircases over and over and over again. Um, this deep dungeon might be a little hard to digest because there's a ton of it going on here, but uh, the the freshness that this brings is, uh, you know, minty. Indeed. And, you know, I want to shout out Pink Puff on the developer team, uh, who's really taken the reins with this particular mode. Uh, I've talked with Pink Puff a bit early on when it came in uh, as a, an option in the beta, and this is phenomenal work to bring into the randomizer. So uh, I can't imagine it's easy work, but... You know, I'm I'm glad to see it being shown off in this event, and you know that we've had it before uh, as well. <laughs> Chad Burt commending the flag creator for not making the encounter rate ridiculous here. Um, I'll, I'll second that. Um, it makes it a lot easier and a lot more fun to explore. Uh, we did find an ice three sword plus five, which is interesting. I always get excited about an ice sword, but. Who knows what that exactly was, <laughs> but who we cares? We have fire. nuke axes. <laughs> yes, we do. Although I do feel like that fighter is going to want to swing something at some point, right? Yes, maybe. But <laughs> like, so typically, uh, I would say that in deep dungeon, flag creators don't go overboard with uh, scaling, and so. As much as the fighter might want to swing something, if you find enough nuke axes, it really doesn't matter. Um, you know, just just think through your experiences in prior seeds, going through the Temple of Fiends Revisited, and thinking about when am I using nukes? Am I using nukes on random encounters? Am I using nukes on bosses? That question is gone when you have a nuke axe. And when you have two of them, so much the better. If you find a third, I don't really see a point in that fighter swinging a weapon versus just holding one up into the air. You make an excellent point here. All right, we've got Pickles and Beer kind of funneling experience into his fighter and his white mage, um, which may be extremely valuable. And then we've got Devious RNG finding a tail uh, on this other screen here. Um, but he also has all four of his light warriors up, so he's he's got the the full party mix going on here. 
Um, in your opinion, Saracen, does the deep dungeon format, uh, you know, lend itself to this experience funneling strategy? Or do you think Devious will be more, better equipped for the deeper dives, having more party members up? That's actually an excellent question. So I am really torn on that. Uh, one of the things, like I mentioned before, because you don't really have progressive experience in the same way that uh, that you might if you were, you know, getting key items, right? You don't really have that going on for you here. Um, sure. So getting your characters to acceptable levels, quote unquote, for the bosses is a real challenge. Now, your requirements of acceptable levels change pretty dramatically when you're not fighting all of the fiend refights before chaos right sure. uh, so there's there's really just a you know do we have our win condition do we have our damage for chaos um i think as long as we don't see a nuke chaos right out the gate we're pretty much fine with two or three nuke axes and, and some degree of of defensive buffing um uh, but, you know, only time will tell. <laughs> we haven't really gotten to the point where we know what's going on. Sure, sure. So I, it's all going to circle back to kind of our earlier conversation about how how beefy, how tanky does our final fiend turn out to be? And will nuke axes be enough? Uh, Devious finds his way back to the Bahamut floor um, with that tail in hand. So it looks like he is going for that promotion. We'll have so, to see if he has to fight Bahamut here. Uh, oh, I was I was a little scared for Devious here because this pack of Frost Wolves actually has Frost. And uh, with his levels being a bit lower, oh, we do not fight Bahamut. Okay. No fight, but now we are a little bit beefier, a little bit more fun, a little bit more experienced in the ways of the uh, battle. Terror of death. Greetings. Greetings, friend. So, short recap for the folks coming in and being like, what the heck is this? Uh, we are in a mystery seed of a weekend tournament. This is the semifinals match between Pickles and Beer and Devious RNG in a deep dungeon seed. So, this is kind of the the roguelike of Final Fantasy Randomizer. Not a very common flag set to see, uh, but, you know, it, it's certainly interesting. So I guess what that means is our overworld is locked away on us, uh, and <laughs> the entire game is encompassed in one giant dungeon connected by a series of teleporters, ladders, and staircases. Um, we don't really ever see the outside overworld, and we're just basically dungeon running the whole time. So the big question here, because this looks like it was a double staircase floor, uh, whereabouts are we in terms of towns? So... <laughs> um, That's a question and a half, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know, keeping track of that can be very difficult. Okay, we have found Melmond. Good. Uh, Devious RNG picking up the Ruby, which is going to open up another one of those staircases for quick travel from Canaria. That's going to be a big deal if there is a wipe. Uh, we are seeing fast out in the fourth slot, so I believe that is Black Mage Learnable. Mm -hmm. That is handy. I did not catch the white magic. Did you happen to see that? No, I did not see it unfortunately. Uh, Ooh, we do gold have plus four. Plus fours. That is some solid, and also ice plus five is available here. Uh, another piece of uh, quality armor. So the one downside is the price point is just high enough to be a little bit out of reach to get all of the mages covered in that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that Pickles and Beer is going to be focused on that. Devious RNG at the same time finding Crescent Lake. So he's a few floors lower little bit richer for it uh now the one downside here is we see those houses with their very affordable pricing and the unfortunate truth is they do nothing for us they they are completely unusable so this is another seed where camping gear um just has no value to us unfortunately 
Yeah, and it's very unfortunate when you find that camping gear and you're like, you know, this this would be great if I could use it. Now level that six temper. level six temper is a, a nice uh, nice thing to see there. Nothing in uh, white magic there. And then uh, chat, thank you, pointing out that cure two was really the best uh, white spell at level five. So nothing nothing missed there. So as we're going through here, what I'm seeing is that Pickles and Beer is a few floors behind. So Devious has a bit of an exploration lead. But man, Pickles and Beer, it, he can just push through whenever he wants. The real question is, you know, did we find a life spell that we can use on that white page so that we can eventually get the other party members up on their feet and using some item magic? Uh, or <laughs> are we just going to be walking around with these two nuke sticks and, and hoping for the best until we get to the end. I mean, um, it makes it's hard to argue again. I mean, we have two nuke axes. It's really hard to argue against wandering around with two characters that have nuke axes. Right. And, and then the other thing is, I was honestly surprised that Devious had gone back to promote. It, it is a very important tactical decision at that point because he had to go back several floors and remember which floor had Bahamut and where. So when Pickles and Beer picks up the tail, which I think maybe not very far from, do you go back and do that? And that has a big impact when you're talking about uh, the, the spells that are available as you progress and uh, Potentially some equipment, you know, if you find a black shirt or a white shirt that rolls up pretty substantially, that's going to be a lot better than a gold bracelet. Yeah, you best believe. I am, huh, one one idea, one thought that just popped into my head is I'm wondering if we will have uh, an alternative chaos fight uh, at the bottom as well. I think that is a flag that would be an option here. I am honestly not sure, but that would be pretty impressive. So another strategy thing when you're looking at Deep Dungeon is that little room that you saw Pickles and Beer go to, those rooms are almost always just empty. Uh, the smaller the room, the less likely the chests populate in them with the proc gen. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of questions about do I even bother walking through that door once you see that, you know, there's a termination in a room. Now, the other side of that is sometimes you have staircases hiding in there. <laughs> And yeah. that's your way out. You did see a smaller room that had a chest and a staircase, or a, a, it was a chest and a ladder, I think, was in a small room kind of somewhat early on. So, I mean, you're right on the stats are not with you when it comes to those small rooms, but every once in a while, you're going to have one of those small rooms that I think, uh, you know, leaves you uh, happy. Mm-hmm. All right, so Devious still plugging along. X for a sword. <laughs> That's yeah. about the only case that I'd see for using X for. And from my, I, I know I'm, I'm a scrub who doesn't use X for, but. Uh, I mean, we've got Bane swords and X for swords. I mean, that seems like the pretty clear path on how to take down chaos. Saber sword plus six. Hmm. There we go. We've got Brack Swords too. So it's the X for Brack Sword strat, I think, is uh, the only true way to defeat Chaos here. So Devious uh, saw an early stare and just took it, which can be a concern in Deep Dungeon. Um, it's a very easy way to miss your towns, mm -hmm. but we'll see if that ends up being a concern. Uh, I very much think that it's going to be a concern because if I'm not mistaken, that fighter is the only one standing. <laughs> Pull up to see what happens. Oh, all right. Pickles and Beer finds his tail. Um, it may be worth, I guess, in my opinion, it might be worth backtracking for him. Um, having only two light warriors wandering around, but, uh, you know, we'll leave that decision up to him, obviously. Uh, we do have Classic Gamer. Um, I'm going to say he's lamenting the monster in the box is not turned on, it being um, the best flag um, that we have available to us. 
but uh, that's okay. We are uh, we're, we're monster in the box monster in a box list, but uh, we can continue on. Ooh, a cure for gauntlet. That is a tasty bit of armor there. We can uh, heal any one of our characters up to full. It seemed uh, pretty broken there. Chad, Chadbert looking to run a deep dungeon seed tonight. I am honestly thinking the same thing. I feel like I need to try this out. This, this looks buck wild, and I'm, I'm looking forward to taking it for a spin. Are there any other randomized Final Fantasy games? Mushu in chat comes out with the big questions. Um, yes. I guess I, there are some <laughs> I do know. Um, I don't have all of the details on them. I know that, uh, what is it, Final Fantasy IV is pretty big. Um, yep. And five, I believe, also has a pretty good following. Um, I think those are big ones. Uh, so there is a Final Fantasy 3J randomizer. So, you know, the, the old Nintendo one that didn't come over to the U.S. until the 3DS release. Um, four through six all have randomizers as well. Um, I would say, I, you know, I say this, uh, this... This is really a shout out to just how committed our devs are. I think that the Final Fantasy randomizer for Final Fantasy 1 is the most robust randomizer of any game out there. And, and that's a big claim, right? You know, you're, you're talking about giants like ALTTPR out there. Um, FFR is substantial. <laughs> and, you know, even comparing it to the other Final Fantasy randomizers out there, you know, when you're looking at the Final Fantasy three or six or four, uh, you know, they're, they're big. They have great communities. I think that they're not quite as functional or, you know, feature complete, if you will. Uh, we have so many bells and whistles in FFR that this is, uh, you know, I would say top of the line. I, I, you know, I can't agree with you more. I think our the dev team that works on this Final Fantasy in particular does a spectacular job. I mean, they are dedicated, hardworking folks who have really, really, you know, put anything and everything that the community has asked for up for consideration. And, you know, singing their praises cannot be done often enough. So Pickles and Beer has headed back to Canaria. That is a commitment. <laughs> now, so, uh, J Spags, is this the only Final Fantasy randomizer with a deep dungeon mode? The the only one with one built in. So, uh, as I understand it, there are other deep dungeons out there, but they're kind of a separate thing. Um, so the work that has been done here, there there was a standalone deep dungeon for FFR or FF1, and the work that has been put in by the development team here has brought it fully into the randomizer itself. So, uh, hmm, it's maybe a tracking thing. I don't know, did Pickles and Beer end up finding the ruby? I know that Devious found the ruby. Um, I'm trying to figure out if he turned it in here to go on a different path. Like, maybe he's going down all of the different paths here to see which one he, you know, finds most favorable. So, uh, Alemark in confirming that yes, he did. And, you know, I'd seen him pick it up uh, just before that question came in. Um, so that that took him back to floor 22 from what ale's saying which yeah it's a it's a big catch up uh the the trance lock on dvs Ugh. Oof. now all right so we'll we'll talk about our upshot here the upshot is he's getting hit for ones and twos <laughs> so you know, so this thing is he might be here for a really, really long time. <laughs> so, yes, yes. Um, and and the, the downside is he doesn't really have the levels yet at the night MDEF growth to uh, to avoid these trances if they get staggered out by the monsters. And um, 
you know, I'll be honest. I feel like crit loops happen with with uh, paralysis entirely too often. At least that's how I feel about it, right? Like, oh, I've got one character left, and and he's stuck, paralyzed, and you know, fifty turns later, I'm still paralyzed. Yeah, it looks like they are doing a ridiculous job of staggering these trances. Um, they are just trance happy. I think that's might be the only thing in their list of spells and or abilities here. It looks like it's just hit trance, hit trance, hit trance, um, straight down the line. The classic gamer pointing out that scripts and spells may be vanilla. And if that's the case, um, <laughs> I know that the DVS has a, uh, a ribbon on that night, but, uh, didn't sorcerers have death touch in vanilla or something like that? <laughs> um, I didn't think it was death touch. I thought it was, um, classic gamer saying vanilla death touch. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, with the, the ribbon on, um, uh, and this is, this is a topic that gets brought up a lot. The ribbon in final fantasy randomizer does protect against the status attacks if randomize is on. But it doesn't look like randomize is on. So it does it have the death element? <laughs> uh, uh, you can randomize or shuffle touches without shuffling skills and spells. So I, I thought that one of the checkboxes had to be marked in, on the randomize touches in order for the touches to have elements. I'm unsure on that uh but given the long stretch that we have here uh, you know this is a coffee break for dbs uh, <laughs> i would yeah maybe, maybe this is maybe this is when you go uh you know use the bathroom real quick yeah he's, he's catch up on him. some light reading he's going to get himself a drink maybe put him put something a little bit stronger in that drink <laughs> Scream into the void, maybe? Yeah, just grab grab a few pillows. He's gonna drive over to Pickles and Beer's house just to see how he's doing, and then come back. Unplug Pickles' router. There you go. Uh, question in chat, uh, Nanoha? I like your name. Um, what happens when you die in this mode? Well, you uh, end up back at the very, very beginning. So back at uh, our floor zero, um, the only time we get to see the overworld. So, you know, if you're looking forward to seeing a little overworld, if you're getting uh, dungeon weary here and need a little sunlight of the of the Final Fantasy overworld, uh, you may be about to see it if DVS does indeed die here. So, uh... The, the supposition is that game, save on game over is on. So, yes, uh, with that set on, then you would keep everything that you found. Yep. Um, you know, at, at the pace that these sorcerers are going, uh, not only could Devious be ordering a pizza, he could be eating that pizza, regretting his life decisions. <laughs> It's so hard when you, you've got these trance packs, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a single party member or a whole group. Um, that's where you're going to, these are, are just the worst. Yep. So uh, the conversation going on in chat, why does he not reset? Um, I believe, and this was pointed out in chat as well, that if you die it will save and bring you save your items and progress and things and bring you back to the beginning if you reset that does not save your progress and whatnot so it's actually probably better for him to let his uh knight die here so that to, in order to save his progress and everything um which just feels bad from a speed running perspective but is is definitely the better play so i don't know if you caught that on pickles and beers side but there was secret tech that, that just showed up there. When you are inside a room with a roof, you can see into any room with a roof that is on your screen. So he was in the room on the left. He saw the teleporter icon in another room off to the right. So he knew where the stairs were to go to the next floor. 
It's something that doesn't come up at all in, in the standard format, but in procedurally generated deep dungeon floors, it happens all the time. I mean, that's just brilliant gameplay. That's what we're, that's what we're here to see. Giving the people what they want. Pickles and beer. The champion of the people here. Showing them the hot, hot tech. Devious is suffering may be about to end. We're down to less than a hundred hit points on that night. This is just sad. And we have on rack on pickles and beers side, which means the pickles and beer is approaching sorcerer floors. Now, I don't know that pickles and beer has the same level of knowledge about the, uh, the skills and scripts and whatnot. So, there's a very reasonable question. Ooh, we have life available well, for that white life. mage. That's, that's good. Um, but we have the very reasonable question now of, uh, does Pickles and Beer just start powering through floors? Because that's kind of how you avoid the problem that DVS is in. Yeah, uh, I mean, when... I, can't, I can't see him taking any other path. I mean, he's just going to start bowling through as much as he can, I think. Yeah, and if you know that things aren't shuffled, which the frost on the frost wolves is probably the only clue that he's had so far, um, then it is an excellent plan to uh, to just push through, just run to every stair. And here we see TBS finally turning in that ruby. Step three. And we're back at it. So he is going to take a different path. So he was taking that singular northern path um, the whole way down, it looks like. Um, so this is the first time he's uh, deviating from that path to this new path. So he's going to see a few, potentially a few uh, floors and items that he hadn't really seen before. But uh, really, this the way this is set up, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, uh, this just allows him to jump to a lower floor, right? Right, so it's it's a floor he's already been to, but it's um, it makes it so you don't have to go through all the floors that, you know, were between Canaria and where you go to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you saw there uh, maybe that uh, Pickles and Beer hit the, the other awkward thing, which is uh, sometimes the procedural generation will make a room and it looks like there's a path, but because of how the tiles operate that path doesn't actually exist. It is technically two walls. Yep. Um, Professor Renderer in chat. Um, yes, this is the deep dungeon uh, flag. So <laughs> we have no overworld, and this the entirety of the game is encompassed in one deep, deep dungeon. Although deep may be a, a confusing uh, usage of the word because it is, in fact, a deep, deep, super tall tower. Because if you'll notice, the forward progressing stairs are upward stairs. So you climb and you climb and you climb. Uh, looks like we've got level seven nuke over on Pickles and Beer side. He did find our Gaia. Um, so it looks like he's got, there's only one more town between him and, you know, bottom land, it seems like. So that find of nuke in Gaia is, um, it's so sad. Because Pickles and Beer has three nuke axes. So uh, just, you know, toss it back out there. We have item magic on. Every weapon has a spell. And there are three nuke axes found so far on Pickles and Beer's side, which is why he has three party members up. He He's only going to have people up if they have nuke axes. Uh, now, the, the upshot as well is because Pickles and Beer was pushing experience to two party members for the majority of the seed. He's uh, he's going to be a little bit more resistant when he gets to those horrible sorcerers and he's... perhaps will be able to resist some of those trances. Another ribbon. So it looks like uh, 23, level 23 on that fighter and white mage on pickles and beer side, which is not, that's not bad leveling. That's That's pretty solid for, you know, the vanilla game heading into kind of the, the the late game stages. 
classic gamer pointing out that with the Grey Worms having sleep touch, the touches are shuffled or randomized. So that is uh, that is good knowledge there. That that tells us that the sorcerers are in fact just gonna slowly tickle you to death. Fun. A uh, question regarding posting a link. I actually don't know what the policies are for RPG Limit Break when it comes to posting links, so I cannot uh, rubber warrant that. Yeah, I think typically the answer is no to that question, so I, I'm, apologies, friend. Um, if you'd the like new to share more, are for you... sale. <laughs> oh, what? All right, well, let's back up. Everybody gets two new gaxes. We're going to double wield some new gaxes. Yeah, <laughs> way less expensive than uh, the actual nuke spell, too, which, you know, enchanting an item with a spell for less than the spell costs, that's just not good uh, shop ownership, you know. You should really, the enchanter should really be uh, charging more. I, I like that it's in the same town as the spell being sold. Uh, that was a Brack shirt which Pickles and Beer has no interest in because Pickles and Beer has not promoted and will not promote, I think. Uh, yeah. The, no, the other think, thing of note... The other thing of note is if you caught some of the encounters here, uh, Pickles and Beer is getting Sky encounters. And we've seen Chimeras, we've seen uh, Mud Goal Sorcerer packs. Um, you know, we're getting to the point where... The, all right, Mud Goal Sorcerer, a little concerning, right? It's not a seven pack of Trancing Sorcerers. It was, it it was three not. Sorcerers, and that's a big difference. Here we're getting Gershark Wizzahag, so Sea Shrine Encounters. That kind of tells you where you're at, right? The the encounters are sort of tiered as you go through. Um, so, you know, that's just a consideration that you have as you go through, is, you know, can we handle the encounters that are coming up? We have nuke axes. The answer is yes. It's just a matter of how many nuke axes go off. Yeah, you uh, bet your bottom dollar. Professor Render in chat asking, I'm guessing the stats in the boxes of the magic weapon and armor stats. Yep. So if you pick up a weapon, it's going to show you the stats of the weapon. If you pick up some armor, it's going to show you the stats of the armor. And it is a flag that I am honestly in love with. I, I love being able to see those stats. I'm I'm very much a, you know min-maxing, looking at the different stats that it offers. It's not something that you, I guess I, maybe people did, uh, people probably did. I never really paid that much attention to when it came to playing the game originally. Um, you know, just, hey, is this sword better than this sword? Was <laughs> the real question I was always asking. But being able to see those specific numbers and the evasion on the armor and all that jazz is uh, pretty damn sweet. So... That is actually a great point for me, too, because I have always just lived by the, is it a big plus? If it's a big plus, I should swing it, you know? I'm a simple man, just just give me big pluses. Uh, oh, okay. This is this is a lot easier to figure out, you know, how I should be equipping. Uh, Devious seeing that Bud Goal Sorcerer pack just running away. Brave Sir Robin. Uh, Ooh, we've got Tyros. Yeah, indoor Tyros. What brave soul decided that putting a uh, T-Rex inside of the, the, their dungeon was going to be a good idea? I mean, that's got Jurassic Park written all over it. Na, 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 na. Well, let's not let's not get RPG limit break DMCA. <laughs> Does it count if it's being just sun slash hum? <laughs> I, I I don't know if it counts if you're if you're just humming, right? I feel like it's. I feel like it's still the music notes. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. All right, I'll be careful. <laughs> well, uh, we do have the other half of this uh, semi-final match is uh, Lord Fizzlebeef versus Zeno himself, um, and I do know that uh, there are some experienced lawyers around here that may be able to answer our questions uh, regarding DMCA's maybe. <laughs> oh, an Aegis Shield plus five does Pickles and Beer very little good because he will not be seeing that knight in all uh, likelihood. 
We're seeing the Gur Medusas. Good to see, good to see. Devious RNG seeing some of those uh, river encounters, our pre-waterfall encounters. So we can tell that Pickles and Beer is a little bit deeper than Devious at this point. And here's that secret tech you can see on the bottom right of Pickles' screen. You could see the uh, that hole that denotes another staircase. Uh, it feels like he's checking to see where the boxes are as well. So... So one of the things that we know now, since Pickles just took that staircase on the left side, is that that other staircase was Lafayne. Oh, that is a great point. So I guess, does he want to go back to Lafayne at this point? Maybe to heal up? I, I, I guess I'm not quite sure if that has any value for him. I don't think it has any value. Um, you know, when you think about what's there, it's level eight magic, it's an inn, and it's a revive shop. So realistically, he's gained a couple of levels so he could have spell charges he might want, right? The only thing that matters is being able to cast life if he needs it. Uh, classic Gamer asking, is Lafayne Superstar on? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, great <laughs> <It's>, question. Uh, <laughs> We will not know unless uh, one of the runners goes in there. So, uh, science. So we do have uh, we do have our, our chat lawyers are here um, for you, Saracen. They are saying that they are taking your side on this. That you know, humming will likely not get you uh, in any trouble. So I think we're good. We'll just hum our way through all of our favorite theme songs from here on out. So devious, catching up real fast. He had a substantial lead before, uh, and now is very close on Pickles and Beer. I think they might be on the same floor at this point. They are, if they are not, they are super, super close. I think Pickles and Beer has kind of spent a lot of time on this floor. Um, he's explored several of the different options, picked up a few of the different chests here. Um, he hasn't really found a ton, so advantage DVS here if uh, he doesn't go, you know, ham on the chest checking and here we have our lafane that we discussed let's see if there is a superstore as we mentioned pickles and beer fighting the hardest boss which is not hitting the reset button uh, <laughs> i have uh i have had so many problems in this deep dungeon flag set where i've gone to an inn and absolutely just reflexively hit soft reset and then you know yelled at myself for several minutes after. I... I completely believe that. Um, ooh, on DVS's side, we've got a uh, Temple of Fiends Revisited encounter there. So, we're, we're in the deepness now. I think we are getting very close to finishing this out. And, you know, I think if there is a difference to be had at this point, it is that Devious checked the weapon shop in Gaia, got that fourth nuke axe. Because... Oh, another ribbon here. We've got three ribbons for Devious. And, and nice. just remember, in, in Deep Dungeon, there is, you know, no limit to the number of ribbons you could find. You could find 12 ribbons. It's just, you know, what, what it ended up in the chests. So uh, you never know. And they are on the same floor right now. We are, this is getting pretty darn exciting here. Both of them finding, you know, Temple of Fiends revisited encounters, both of them super deep, both of them having this slightly different strategy here, more of an XP funnel on Pickles and Beer side, DVS, you know, keeping his entire party alive. Um, you pointed out that checking those Gaia shops, getting the extra nuke axes, kind of taking it as they come. Um, and we are we are getting down to the wire here. Pickles and beer taking the clear path forward. Going to check a chest or two here. You know, if I'm in either of these runners' shoes, you know, we're an hour into deep dungeon. We know that we are getting to the end. We're seeing these encounters that are part of the uh, the Temple of Fiends revisited tables. I'm checking no chests anymore. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm I, done looking at boxes. I'm looking for chaos. 
Yeah, so. it's a let's take stock. Are we ready to rumble? Are we ready for the final fiend? See, there's that staircase. Yep, not gonna check anything else. It's uh, it's up, up, up time. Yep, stairs are the only thing that matter right now. And when you don't find stairs, you're checking rooms for chaos. So let's not forget, we're racing here. This is a race. <laughs> So we will have to seek out chaos. Um, could be hidden in probably one of these rooms coming up. There he is. Here we go. So we're about to have a chaos fight. The secret tech here is you do still have to talk to chaos three times. He he does actually just it's three sprites with a different text box for each one. So. You do have to keep talking to him until you start the fight, and that has confused runners in the past. You got it. You got. You have to catch the final boss monologuing. It's the typical, you know, comic book play. So we've got pickles and beer shuffling around some of his items, checking in, seeing what items he has, moving maybe some of his armor and stuff around. DVS finding chaos. We might have a simultaneous chaos fight here. Uh, we're right, going to. It's first. just. It's just who's going to shuffle around a little bit more. I don't think there's a point in shuffling. I'd just be nuking. <laughs> We've got Invis 2 coming out from the White Mage. And then we're going to go with Fast. Invis 2 comes out. Nice. Great to see that right away. Devious talking to Chaos. Fast comes out from the Black Mage on Pickles and Beer side. Saber coming out. Ice 3 comes out from Chaos. White Mage rolling again. Going to get our buff spells out as Devious enters the Chaos fight as well. Invis 2 coming out again. We're going to get lock strats, wall strats, saber coming out on pickles and beer side. Lock 2 coming out onto chaos on pickles and beer side. It's too much to handle, man. There's too many things going on. We've got cure 4 coming out. Ooh, crack comes out from chaos. That's going to be nasty if we uh, don't dodge that. Good thing we've got those ribbons, though. Uh, saber coming out some more. Cure 4 coming out, making sure that white mage stays up and healthy. Mute Axe coming out from <laughs> DVS's side, Inferno hitting his team squad, Lit 3 on Pickles and Beer's side, knocking his party down a little bit, Saber continues to come out, Temper continues to come out, we've got some x for strats coming in here, whew, x for x for x for we've got Nuke, Nuke, Nuke coming out on DVS's side, looks like Pickles and Beer's still going for the buff and hit strat, here comes the first swing, 8 hits for 1100 damage, nice swing, Inferno from Chaos over on that side. We've got DVS coming in with lock strats, the Expert strats still coming out, we're going to see what happens there, but the White Wizard goes down. Expert did land, looks like we've got an Expert landing. We've got Nuke coming out on both sides, more Nuke, more Nuke, more Nuke, the Fighter swings, hits, that's 7 hits for 600 some damage. We've got Nuke coming out, more Nuke, an Invis Hammer coming out, I don't know when we saw that item. Ice 3 coming out from Chaos. Oh, and Pickles and Beer knocks down Chaos. GG's to Pickles and Beer. So close. Chaos comes out with Swirl. Ooh, takes down everyone except for that knight. What's DVS got left in the tank? He's got a Lit 3 from Chaos. Cure 4. Gauntlet on the knight. Slow 2 comes out. Oof. That hits. One hit for 43 damage. Tornado comes out. Nuke Axe. He's, we're switching to Nuke Strats. Nuke for 256. Crack misses. Nuke comes out again. 278. We're going to cure four. Make sure we stay healthy here. Chaos has cure four as well. Oh no. Oh, fire three comes out. We're going to nuke for 150 something. We're going to nuke again. That's 181. Ice two comes out for only 22 damage from Chaos. Nuke Axe comes out again. 120 damage. Oof. We're going to need some bigger hits from that Nuke Axe. Come on. Chaos hits one time for 91 damage. Nuke Axe comes out 340. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Nuke from Chaos. Oof. Nuke comes out again, 105 damage. Cure 4, we gotta go to those Cure 4 strats. Need that Knight to stay up. Cure 4 heals him to full. Nuke Axe coming out again, 123 damage. Lit 3 from Chaos. Slow 2 from Chaos again, doesn't have any effect. 152 from the Nuke Axe. Chaos swings, Chaos misses. Nuke Axe again for 214. Gonna have another Nuke Axe come in hot here for 188. Inferno only hits for 80. Thank you, Agent Steel. Cure four on chaos again. Ugh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if we have the legs for this. Nuke 
Axe again for 100 something damage. Ice 2 comes through. Nuke Axe again for 175. We're gonna nuke again. 137. Chaos cast fast once more time. One more time. Nuke comes out one more time for 270. Swirl from Chaos. Are we gonna cure four here? You bet your bottom dollar that we are. But Chaos hits with the nuke first. DVS goes down. And it looks like DVS has forfeited this at this point in time. We are joined in the booth by Devious RNG. Hey GG. guys. Hey, hey buddy. Thanks. GGs. Thanks. GGs. Man, you guys were neck and neck for so much of this race. So uh, I guess jumping right into it, tell us, tell it, give us your thoughts, give us your feelings on this deep dungeon flag set. Uh, is is Pickles in here too? I don't know if it's just me or who should it's go first. Pickles is not in here just yet. Okay, cool. I, was, I was like, uh, uh, um, yeah. Um, no, I I like deep dungeons. I thought it was it was very fair. Um, like the scaling was fine. Um, having lots of caster items was was good. Like it's a it's a fun flag set. Uh, the last time I played this, the um, extra staircases hadn't been added in yet, so um, that was really new to me, so I didn't quite know how to handle that and how the, um, the different items were, were placed throughout the dungeon. Um, yeah, but overall, I really, like, I really enjoy Deep Dungeon, and I'm glad I got a, a little bit of a showcase in, in a, bigger, uh, a bigger arena, but... Yeah, that's that's kind of my feeling. It, I got my, you know, <laughs> I, I'm I'm named Devious RNG because I often encounter Devious RNG, as you saw with that eight minute uh, sorcerer trance debacle. Um, what did you do while while you were waiting for those sorcerers to resolve that? Did, uh, did you like order a pizza or something? Uh, I mean, I, I sipped some water. Uh, I I was I was kind of hoping that eventually my my fighter would get unstunned. But honestly, most of the time I was just trying to do the math of what am I doing? Where like is it worth stay and die for the save, or should I reset out and just lose whatever progression I had up until that point? And the reason I decided to stay was because the fighter had gained like eight or nine levels over everybody else. And I figured that I wouldn't be able to bring the fighter up to those levels up until, like I wouldn't be able to bring that, the fighter up to those levels in an efficient enough amount of time. So I, it took about eight minutes to get, the, uh, to get killed but I think it would have taken a lot more fights and potentially a chaos wipe to, um, you know, if I hadn't. So it, it was more just trying to figure out what the best strategy was. And then as soon as I kind of like settled into, I'm just going to let myself die. It was, you know, look at my phone, try not to stress too much. All right, we are joined in here Sort of. Uh, Pickles and Beer is working through some technical issues as we are uh, getting in here. Um, so yeah, I guess just from just from the perspective of viewership on the viewing the race here, DVS, um, mm -hmm. you were I think you were at one point you were uh, at least you were like eight to ten actually floors deeper mm -hmm. um, than Pickles and Beer was. Mm -hmm. um, but he actually just kind of raced on through a ton of floors and started to catch up when you hit that uh, the sorcerer sort of pack. Walk. Um, and so that that kind of made it so the two of you were actually neck and neck for kind of the final, mm -hmm. ooh, I don't know, 15 or 10, 15 floors. I'm not quite yeah. sure how, how, how much space there was between kind of your your item turn in wherever that, uh, wherever that staircase puts you back out after the right. wipe. Right, um, because you you popped out from the wipe like three floors behind 
uh, pickles mm. in here. And yeah. So, yeah, I figured <laughs> as soon as I was in the middle of that sorcerer pack, my my instant thought was, um, this is probably going to cost me the game. Um, but it, it's you know I'm uh, like I'm happy for pickles and beer. Um, you know it's a it's a good run. Like deep dungeon is is something that you have to have practiced before. Um, like again, I, I have no idea where those other three staircases lead or how the code works in. I was really hoping for a fame towards the end of the dungeon to like try to find some other type of spell. Um, and realize like trying to figure out how to approach chaos. Like is chaos gonna be spell heavy? Is it gonna be beefy? And then I I realized he was he wasn't gonna hit very hard. Everyone's got ribbons. Let me switch to nuke strats. And he decided to punch the white mage, then insta kill the uh, the black and the red. And you guys saw that once I hit cure four in the spell uh, the spell pool, and his RNG got looped into casting spells every turn. Um, that that kind of sealed the deal for me there. Yeah, you got a. It was a relatively vanilla chaos, interestingly enough. Something we mm -hmm. don't often get to see. Um, mm -hmm. We are joined out by our victor here, Pickles and Beer. Uh, GG's, man. Hey, GG, thank you. GG, uh, Davis. Yeah, GG's, man. Now, Pickles, have you practiced this deep dungeon flag set before? Um, and if if so, either way, uh, how how do you feel about it? That is the second time I've ever done that. So I was just just trying. I had a feeling it probably plays out somewhat the same. I tried to skip a few floors, look for the key uh, the, uh, key item. Uh, obviously missed that last one, so I had to just go with it. Yeah. Um, I know that, uh, you know, we were talking to Devious about uh, the the kind of new get the key item appear deeper in the dungeon kind of uh, stair set kind of being a somewhat recent addition to the deepest dungeon or deep, deep dungeon. I keep wanting to say deepest dungeon. I don't know if that's a... Is that a different game, maybe? <laughs> uh, I think Darkest Dungeons, what you're looking at there. I mean, I've played a plenty of that, but that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> um, so I guess Pickles and Beer, uh, I'm sure you'll, you know, maybe you'll take a look at this uh, uh, race at some point in the future, but uh, De Devious was actually uh, quite a few floors ahead at one point, but ran into some nasty sorcerers um, and ended up trying to save all of the levels that he had gained by taking a wipe on the sorcerers, and it was just kind of a unfortunate scenario for him um, that really put the two of you neck in neck. Um, you know, the two of you, Pickles, you probably started your chaos fight about 25, 30 seconds before Devious did. So both of you were, you know, fighting chaos, hit chaos at about the same time, and it was just a very, very exciting fit. Oh, wow, good deal. Yeah, I was, uh, only being the second time doing that deep dungeon, I was just trying to wing it the best I could. I knew that you could. Uh, especially with the uh, all those nuke axes and cure four stuff, I was like, you know what? I just need to get through here. I don't even care about that final key item. I'm just gonna try to find the town, save it, and move on. Can yeah, I tell you did. the secret, pickles. <laughs> the the secret. So you found Gaia. You found nuke in the black magic shop, but what you did not find were the nuke axes in the weapon shop in Gaia. So for the three that you had, you could have bought a fourth. Oh, man. And was there anything good at uh, Provoca? Because I missed, <laughs> missed that place. Honestly, not really. Yeah, I missed Melmond and Lafayne, so I don't know if, uh, I don't know what wound up in those two spots. Melmond had fast, which was... Oh, I did it. That I used that to uh, as my main damage on my knight on chaos. Yeah. yeah. So like honestly, one of the hardest parts about this run was the uh, the swords, just because with all of them being caster items, uh, I wasn't paying enough attention when I picked up a sword to what the damage was. So I didn't 
I couldn't tell which weapon was better than whichever other weapon. So I kind of just decided on one and, and kept it for the rest of the game and just crossed my fingers. I don't know if you felt the, uh, the same way, but... Yeah, that's more or less how I did. I checked a couple of them relatively early, and mm -hmm. I I meant to check the stats after mm -hmm. uh, my uh, my third talk to Chaos went a little faster than my uh, start button finger did. So <laughs> I just just rolled with what I had. Yeah. I, ironically, I was actually really thrown off because uh, when I hit the text box first, I was like, "Wait, why didn't the fight start? Did, do I have to kill the fiends? Did I miss something?" And I went, oh, right, there's three different text boxes that, yeah, I played this game once or twice. I should, I should, I should realize that. That actually happened to me the first <laughs> deep dungeon that I did. I yeah. talked to him, nothing happened, and said something about the fiends, and apparently that's just his vanilla text box. And so I left, and I, <laughs> I explored for probably another half hour, and I'm like, I just go back and talk to him again, and then I felt really stupid. Yeah, well, I, I, I feel like I've got a similar thing, so, yeah, <laughs> happens happens to the best of us, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel it, it kind of sucks that I wasn't able to, uh, to put down chaos to finish this off, but, you know, as my name say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fight RNG, and unfortunately RNG Plus, you know, Pickle's strong running. I mean, obviously, uh, got the got the better of the day for me. So I'm I'm excited for the the finals coming up, and uh, and honest, and definitely wish you the best. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't know how excited I am for it. I was honestly kind of like, yeah, oh, man, I don't know if I want to do another one of these, but oh well. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. It's just like, oh man. I'm not real, not real uh, experienced with a lot of these flag sets. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, I am looking forward to seeing you in the finals, Pickles and Beer. Uh, I I don't know yet who your opponent will be. That that's the match between Zeno and Lord Fizzlebeef happening uh, on the FFR channel, which may have actually been completed already. But it is uh, still underway. Oh, fantastic. Still going on. Uh, looking forward to seeing the results of that and to the finals in just about an hour and 45 minutes. So just real quick, uh, one question I did have before we go to final thoughts. Uh, Devious, you promoted. You you went back the, the five-ish mm -hmm. floors to promote. Mm -hmm. Tickles and Beer, you did not. Uh, let's let's walk through that decision real quick. Devious, let's start with you. Uh, opal armor. And and end of sentence. Opal armor. Makes sense to me. I saw that opal armor in Canaria. Yeah. I well, I mean, just I like yeah. End game spells, whatever, with the new axes, the lock swords, the cure four bunks. Well, I don't think I had a cure four bunk before I went down. Um, but I remember. The, the the differentiator when when I ran this for a hardcore run was not finding Bahamut, so that's kind of ingrained in my head that you know part of the reason that went poorly for me actually I think I had a sorcerer encounter in that run too um, that kind of took me out, but. The, the big differentiator was if you found Bahamut, you were able to equip the armor that you needed and the weapons you needed to finish. And if you didn't find Bahamut, then you need, you were basically, uh, uh, yeah, bad things. So that's I why gotcha. I Bahamut. How about you, Pickles? Um... I was concerned. I felt that I was behind because I was worried that if there's like tells on the deep dungeon, like certain floors always have the two exits, like the progression and then the town. If it was something like that, I felt like that was a real big disadvantage. And I hadn't found that third 
uh, shortcut key item, and I took a quick look at my armor. So, you know, I had it good enough. I was like, yeah, we're just going to go. Rock on. Yeah. I, I don't know if the uh, the hints say it, but I know that there is programming for approximately which floors each town can show up in and which floors Bahamut can show up in. I, I don't know if there's similar uh, code for the, the key items, but honestly for me, I, I'm unaware of any tells or anything other than approximate ranges for when floors show up or for when towns show up. I believe there is an approximate range for like the tail being within X space of Bahamut, like mm -hmm. like five floors or something. Mm -hmm. So there, there is there is stuff like that. I guess uh, final thoughts on the seed. Uh, we'll go over to pickles and beer first. Uh, it was fun. Had a good time. Uh, glad that it wasn't a total slog like a lot of the other ones were it's like the two plus hour range that was nice but uh yeah it was fun devious yeah i mean i'm again i'm glad that that deep dungeons got a nice showcase here um oh no i can't remember the developer pink pop pink puff thank you i was gonna say i, I that sounds familiar but i didn't want to uh to say something wrong but very big thank you to them for for coding this entire thing and uh it's a it's a great flag I'm, I'm glad that the devs were able to work it into the actual uh randomizer website it used to be a um a separate application you had to run so I, i'm glad that that's like fully integrated into uh into the randomizer and thank you guys for comms and uh, tonight at nine o'clock, we have the uh, Duck Derby round one. So um, it's it's a great day for FFR. I'll be calming um, one of the races. I I don't remember which one it is, but yeah, nine o'clock tonight. GGs to both of our runners. Uh, Aaron, did you have any final thoughts? Well, first and foremost, thank you uh, to our restream partner rpg limit break for hosting us always nice to have a stage to show off the uh, runners in our community thank you soria rex for cocoms dark moon ex for tracking and restreaming and thank you to both of the runners here devious pickles and beer is great uh being able to calm your match i had a lot of fun i hope you did too uh and with that solario go ahead take us out Thanks everyone for tuning in for the race today. Again, this is the semi-final match of uh, Weekend at Zeno's Mystery Box. Um, there will be the final later today that we did mention. We do have the other half of this semi-final. Looks to be wrapping up relatively soon over on Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy Randomizer channel. Very exciting. They have both runners are super close. Exciting finish going on over there right now. Um, thank you to Saracen for uh, sitting in the booth with me tonight. And uh, GG's to both of our runners again. Thank you, Dark Moon, our tracker and restreamer, and uh, RPG Limit Break for hosting us here. Um, have a wonderful afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are. Thank you. <laughs>